Now once we get into Access and start creating our own databases and our own objects within those databases, then a lot of what we're about to review will make sense. For the moment, we're simply having an interface tour. So if we open the sample working database in your working folder called sample 2013, this is what you will see. We have a status bar across the top that tells me that we are in Access and that I am currently using sample 2013 which is a database located in this long location. And it's in the format access 2007 to 2013. So the current file format, ACCDB is the extension, is the correct format for all databases created and used in access 2007, access 2010, and access 2013. Over on the left, we have the access icon, so the new 2013 access icon. And then we have a number of quick access icons in our quick access toolbar, which we discuss separately. We then see our familiar ribbons of home, create, external data, database tools, and probably not so familiar menu item of file. Now I call it a menu item rather than a ribbon because when we click file, we're taken to a whole set of other options here down the left, which then potentially lead us into further options. So let's come back out of there to our access database. Now, when you're looking at an access database, down the left here is the navigation pane. These are all the objects currently broken into their object type. So we have a type called tables, and these are our tables, a type called queries, and this is our one query in this particular database, forms, our one form, reports, our one report, and macros, our one macro. A very simple macro that I can open by simply double clicking, and that goes for any of the other objects. All objects can be opened by double clicking. So I double click CMD hello, it says hello. Each of the other objects are a bit more useful because they contain our data. So the data is really only contained in the tables. The queries enable us to filter that data. The forms enable us to look at that data in a particular way, perhaps filtered, perhaps styled. And reports allow us to output data from the database that is still stored in the tables, but perhaps by filtering or sorting or grouping. Now within our navigation pane, we can hide any of these groups by simply clicking the little arrow here to hide all the queries or hide all the forms or hide all the tables. They're still there, they're just simply compressed and hidden from view and they can soon come back by expanding each of the groups. We can also hide the navigation pane by using the left arrow here and that pushes the navigation pane over to the left, and we simply then click again to expand. If you have long object names, then the width of this pane might not be big enough. Well, it's adjustable. So you can go wider, or you can go narrower if you want to use less space, if you've gone for nice short object names. Let's go back out so we can see the title, which is all access objects. Now you can group your objects in here, not necessarily by their object type, we can go into this little drop down here and group them by tables and related views. And then they're then grouped by how they're related to each other. And there is a one unrelated item, which is our macro. Or we can group them by their creation date or their modified date. Looks like everything was modified today. Or we can even look at creating our own custom groups, which we will look at as we move forward. So let's go back to the object type. As well as being able to group them differently, we can actually filter so we don't see everything. And in that same little drop arrow, here's our option to filter. Currently we're seeing all access objects. If we only want to see tables, we could choose tables and therefore we would only see tables and the heading would say tables to give us a clue that we're not looking at everything in the database. Or we can go back and choose all access objects to bring everything back again. So that's the left hand navigation pane. In our ribbons, we have the home ribbon and you'll notice a lot of items here are grayed out because they're not really accessible until you have an object open. So if I open the employees table by just double clicking, suddenly a lot more of our options are available, such as sorting and filtering, copying and pasting, refreshing, saving, spelling on our records, finding items, switching from one window to another and even formatting. So most of these home ribbon options are for open objects and to deal with open objects. 
If we want to create a new object, we would use the Create ribbon, where we can see we can create tables, there's a whole section here, queries, a whole little section here, forms, much bigger section, reports, another largest section, and then macros and code for creating our own macros. So all new database objects, regardless of which of our little object sections they fall into, are created from the Create ribbon. And there's even some nice shortcut items underneath the application parts, which again we will look at in due course. Now if you want to use access with some external data, we have an external data ribbon where we can import data from Excel or access or pretty much any other data source really, any other ODBC database, text file, XML file, and even more options here. So we can get data into access from a variety of sources. We then have an export option that allows us to take some of our access data and export it for use in Excel, text file, XML, into a PDF, even send it by email or into another access database or into a word mail merge. So there's lots of ways of sending your data out of the database to make use of it in other applications. We then have a database tools ribbon that allows us to compact and repair, run some macros, investigate and create relationships, this whole section here, run a few analysis tools, and then even move data into another access database or into SharePoint. So those are the main ribbons. And just like all the rest of Office, if you have an object open, you will get some context sensitive ribbons. So because I have a table open, I have table tools, and that gives me a fields and a table sub ribbon. So each of the context ribbons we will explore as we open one of those items. So if I close the tables, I lose that context sensitive ribbon. I'm left with the four main ones. Home for dealing with the current object. Create for creating new objects. External data for either importing or exporting data. And then a variety of database tools are stored on the database tools ribbon. Finally, we have the file menu that allows us to create new databases open an existing database, save this database or the open object. So you'll see we have two options there when we explore that. Even print items, close the current database, visit the account options, or go into access options. Only this last one, the access options, opens a completely separate dialog box, allowing us to get into the access options, the majority of which we'll explore as we come across them. So that's the Access 2013 interface. It has changed slightly from previous versions. Depending on how old in a version you are using will depend on how dramatic that change has appeared to you. But that's the start, and now we can start to get in and get our hands mucky.